Hello, and welcome to the 305 Sports Hub. I'm your host, Zachary Halpert, and this is Radio 108.1, The Fam. I am here with Gianni Campanello and Charlie Keller. Today, we are going to be talking about Kevin Durant trade talk rumors to the Celtics. If you want to call in and weigh in your opinion on this, our number is 508-305-3055. And once again, that's 508-305-3555. The lines are open. All right, so I'll start this off by saying I do not think the Celtics should trade for Kevin Durant. Although he's a good per- prolific scorer, he will not add as much as some as if we have to give up Jalen Brown and possibly Marcus Smart or Derek Wright. That is giving up two assets who adds a good amount of scoring and play defense for our team. It's not worth giving both of them up and a good amount of future draft pick to get Kevin Durant, who will only really be on the team for two to three years and possibly ask for a trade knowing his um, past. Yeah, I'm going to weigh in. I, I, I agree with that take. I don't think it's wise to detonate a finals team. Not necessarily detonate, but if this team has taught you anything, it's that chemistry and cooperation is key. There's a reason they were the most efficient defense in the league. There was a reason every all five of their starters got defensive player of the year votes. There was a reason all of them were on a defensive team. This team knew how to switch. They knew, they knew their job and they operated to perfection until they ran into the juggernaut warriors. There are, there is some questions as to the production of some of the team's better players in the playoffs in regards to scoring, which Kevin Durant would in theory solve, but you, there's no guarantee of that because you're shaking with the chemistry that got you there in the first place, which could prove delicate and it could work. But it's a risky gamble. You, Danny Ainge his, and uh, Brad Stevens have already built up this young core nicely and set them up for one of the brightest futures in the league. I don't think it's wise to tr- deal some of that for a 34-year-old superstar, even if he's a Hall of Famer and a great talent. I don't think it's worth it. It's not every day, though, that you get an opportunity to trade for a top five player in the league that would make you the best team in the league. I would take a Boston Celtics team with Kevin Durant over the Golden State Warriors like nine times out of ten with Jalen Brown I don't know if I could say the same and it's not every day that you can push for a championship Boston Celtics fans bring up 2008 so many times and that was what 14 years ago now like this team they should be competing for a championship if you have a superstar that you can trade for that can solve your biggest issue in the playoffs which is scoring there's no reason you shouldn't do it and let's get to some of your callers. All right, we have Jack from Guam on line one. Hello, Jack. Hello, I'm a huge fan of your show, and I just wanted to say that I think the Celtics should trade for Kevin Durant. I mean, like, he is a perennial player. He is that top scorer and a top three scorer in NBA history to me. And I believe, as a diehard Celtics fan, that they should trade for Kevin Durant. Give up Brown, give up Smart, give up Derek White, and maybe a first-round pick. They need Durant to make a championship run this upcoming season. Thank you for your opinion, Jack. Have a nice day. You too, pal. All right, so I want to weigh in on that. Yes, I do agree that Kevin Durant could possibly propel the Celtics to a championship with his extra scoring and consistency within the playoffs and the regular season. I do believe one of the best thing parts of the Celtics is their depth, their bench depth. And we would have to be giving up a good amount of that to go out and get one player who would add scoring. I feel like we um, tried to help our scoring this offseason by adding Malcolm Brogdon, who has always been a good scorer. And if we start him, that'll add a good scoring to our starting lineup. But we could also use him as a sixth man as our lead scorer off the bench. We also added Danilo Gallinari, who is a good shooter. While he won't average too many points, he'll add a nice range at the 3-4 position for us. And... Not to switch gears from the Kevin Durant, Jeff Passan of ESPN MLB has reported the Boston Red Sox have zero plans to deal star shortstop Xander wow. Bogarts, even though he's expected to opt out of his contract at the end of the season. What do you think this means for the Boston Red Sox? What does this speak to their direction as of right now? Well, if they're not going to re-sign him, this is a terrible idea uh, for Heim Bloom. You know, I think that they should be re-signing him in the first place. I, I think agree. to a Carlos Correa as contract big AAV short-term deal. But even if they don't uh, re-sign him, which, you know, it's, there's some valid concerns about how his game's going to hold up as he ages. Especially the defensive concerns. Especially the defense. 
But what's the point of going all in with him for a team that's still three games out of a playoff spot and looks like one of the worst teams in baseball right now? In my opinion, if you're the Boston Red Sox, you should have two choices. You either cut your losses, trade Bogarts, and say, you know what, this just this isn't our year. He's going to leave anyway. Might as well get a prospect or two out of it. Or you say, hey, this guy, he's our franchise cornerstone. He's been with us for nine years. How about we re-sign him? And if just, I'm not mistaken, he's the longest tenured player. He is. He's stemming. He yeah. was there 2013. He was there, obviously, 2018. He's seen winning. He's learning to some good veterans. I think they should keep him around. We saw how good they can be last year. This year, they've been wrecked by injuries. The, the patchwork pitching staff that looked good early on has started to break down injury wise. They're not some of their better hitters have gotten injured. They're not getting great production out of Trevor Story as much as it pains me as a Red Sox fan. But I don't think that you. I think you should go for that Carlos Correa thing. Say Xander, we want you here. You are you are arguably our second best player behind Rafael Devers. You are the face of this franchise right now. You've been here the longest. We want you here. Your art captain-esque player. I don't think there's a reason you should get rid of that unless you really want to embrace a full-out rebuild, which given their payroll and given the players they've got locked in, I don't think that's what they're going to do. And they just signed Story to a massive contract earlier this offseason in a win-now move. It would just be such a confusing move just to immediately switch gears tank with so many win-now contracts on your payroll. Though. Especially with Bogarts. I mean, after they gave Story the contract... Bogarts necessarily isn't the happiest with the franchise right now, which is the only reason, even if we may give him that Carlos Correa-esque um, contract, he won't necessarily resign with us. He may want to leave. He's upset with the organization right now, which is why dealing him at the deadline to possibly fill the other spots that we need, like first base, pitching, and generally outfield, because we don't have necessarily the best outfielders right now, it would help build this franchise up a little more rather than just letting him walk without getting anything out of it. Yeah, I, you said outfield. I think that is an uh, um, area that the Red Sox should be targeting. Right now, the only outfielder that I have confidence in moving forward is Alex Verdugo. And, and even, even he, that, he's been inconsistent. Yeah, He's shown he can be a above-average number two in the lineup hitter but behind Kike Hernandez last year. But he hasn't shown the ability that he should be the pl- person you build your franchise around like the corner infield duel of Devers and Bogarts has. Yeah, I mean, you look at their outfielders right now. Jackie Bradley Jr. should not be back next season. He just cannot hit anymore. Jaron Duran, I think, has a future with this team, but it shouldn't be in center field. It's been a disaster defensively there. And Kike Hernandez, I think he's a terrific locker room presence. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep him around as, like, that super, super that super guy. utility role that he's played but really he's, well. But he's not that leadoff hitter guy that you can just throw in center field and have confidence in. He he can take over whatever position you need to rest. He can go there and fill it adequately. But he's not going to be the kind of guy, again, that you build your franchise around a la Bogarts or Devers. Some, which brings us, last topic for the day. What Why haven't the Red Sox signed Devers to a contract extension? What do you think that indicates? Uh, well, quite frankly, that might be the most mind-boggling, head-scratching move that the Red Sox have made, which is saying something, because there have been quite a few. But he is 25 years old. He is arguably the best third baseman in the league. And there's just he's one of the most valuable players in baseball today. Fangraphs.com ranks him as the number two most valuable third baseman to his team behind only Nolan Arenado, which yeah. is a pretty nice company. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he's 25. He can be on this team for 10 years, and it won't be a bad contract. There is no reason that you should just let him walk for free or especially, even trade him. Especially given you look at this philosophy high and bloom is implicated with yeah. adding all these contact-oriented infielders in the draft. You could slot Mayer or York or some of these other infield prospects that have shown to be good in the minors, shift him or Bogarts to third base, provided they extend Bogarts, slide Devers to first, where he would be, be where that would erase the defensive concerns, and you've still got yeah. arguably a top ten hitter in the game. I mean, shifting him to first would stop those um, 
defensive concerns, but at the same time, we haven't really seen him play first much, if at all, so we don't know how well he will perform at that position, and if that may cause more defensive concerns with possibly not being able to scoop as well or jump for a ball and still get back down to the back. I will say he could be equipped to take over the DH role with Martinez. But Martinez, to me, seems like he's on his way out, so yeah. I do think he will, if Martinez leaves, he will be slotted in as a DH. I can definitely see that, though. And with that being said, that is your show for today. This is the 305 Sports Hub, and we will see you tomorrow.